our capital city, London, is now the world's largest low emissions zone. I think that's something to be proud of, but I know many of you think otherwise. I'm talking, of course, about Mayor Sadiq Khan's expansion of ULEZ today, costing drivers of older vehicles, non-compliant ones, at least £12.50 extra to move around the city every day. Painful? Yes. Horribly painful for some. But that's how deterrents work. And this whole thing has become about more than just air quality, traffic cameras and London. It's become about money, privilege and hypocrisy. In this brave new ULEZ world, you're either pro-motorist or anti-motorist which means you're either on the side of hardworking, ordinary people or you're not. We know that people in power who make unpopular decisions about the way we live often take planes and they get driven around in big cars in order to do their jobs. They are not struggling to get to work or running a small business and we want to see them suffer too, to practice what they preach, what they're telling us to do, what they're legislating us to do. And we could actually insist on that in the way that we vote. We could choose the leader that uses a bicycle and wears hemp clothing. But for many reasons, many of us don't. We could also insist the cost of tackling climate change gets heaped less on ordinary people and more on those still profiting from the stuff that is causing all of this fossil fuels. That would be very worthwhile. But again, we don't do that. So instead, we have to sit with the fact that sometimes in life, difficult decisions will be made for us by the people we put into power decisions about our health and our future. And we should be reminded of and aware of our privilege to shout about these decisions as loud as we want, which is going on at the moment, very much so with you, Les. And we have the power to vote differently next time, if we so choose. And we should remember that some people in other countries would seriously envy us that. And I think that is something else we can be proud of. Well, joining me to debate the cost of the climate crisis, policy director of the Grantham Institute on Climate Change, Bob Ward, and Talk TV presenter Richard Tice in the studio. Down the line, Professor Judith Carey, climatologist and author of the book Climate, Uncertainty and Risk, Rethinking Our Response. Thank you, all three of you. Uh, Richard, I'll come straight to you. I know this is a topic close to your heart. and You've been down there at some of the protests today around you, Les, and you and I do not agree on this topic. Yeah, sure. Look, the question is, does London have a toxic air problem? And the simple answer is no. The quality of London's air is the best it's ever been. According to who? According to everybody who looks at this, according to the World Health Organization, we've got our, our city of London is in the best 25% of cities around the world. The data clearly shows at the roadside across most of London, we are within World Health Organization guidelines. The only area where it's toxic, Rosanna, mm. that everybody seems to forget, yourself included, is the tube where it is brutally unhealthy. Of course that, it's unhealthy on the tube. It's a right. Victorian infrastructure. But if you we look all at, appreciate that. If you look that. at the World Health Organization data, I've used the monitors, the meters. You walk around London's roads, and particularly in outer London, and we are below the WHO Richard. guidelines. We don't have an air pollution problem in London. With all, due, with all due respect, I will come to you, Bob, because I can see you're shaking your head. Uh, with all due respect, Richard, you're a politician and a businessman, but not a scientist. So we will come to the science experts shortly on this. But I'm on just the reading the data. On the, on the politics side, I'm interested to know why you're pegging your political movement so much to this, when there has been so much polling that shows a lot of Brits actually really do care about climate change and they want no, to see the Conservatives don't, don't do more. Don't confuse... London's air quality with climate change is a completely different point. You're talking about what is the quality of London's air. It's the best it's ever been. I'll tell you why, because this is what people care about in London. And this is a tax grab on the poorest, the least well-off small businesses in London. The and that's the point. And you don't seem to care about that. Of course I do. Of course I do, Richard. The cash grab point I want to come to, Bob, on shortly, but it is about climate change because emissions necessarily fit into... It's, it's it about is, the air quality in London. It's the data, Bob, Rosanna, and the data shows we're within the World Health Organization yes. guidelines. Bob, it's the Bob, best it's please, ever been. go ahead, Bob. Yeah, uh, so, come and join so us. So what Richard's yeah. saying is completely untrue. The air is monitored by a group at uh, Imperial College London. The last set of data was for 2020. So remember, it was a year when we had uh, the lockdown in London. There was not a single site across London where the levels of particulate matter and of nitrogen dioxide, the two main air pollutants, were uh, below the, uh, uh, the limit set by the World Health Organization, which is 20 micrograms for nitrogen dioxide. So it's completely untrue to say that the air in London is... Uh, fit to breathe 
It is dangerously high. Has it, it ever been? Cleaner. Has it ever been better than but, it is now, Bob? Richard, has it ever been better? But it, well, it, the answer is it's no. Better. It's the best it's ever been. Richard, there is not Richard, toxic air. You You're lying. Me down. You don't shut, shut me down. You claim that the air was within. WHO level. And it is. That is completely untrue. It is. I've been round with the meters. It says it's healthy. Richard, but Richard you, it you and a meter a is not a scientist. <laughs> yeah. It's a around. World Health Organization approved meter, Rosanna. It what more? We Have you done it? Do, that, do you know what you're talking no, about? No, because I'm not a scientist. Ridiculous. I wouldn't know how to You don't read have to be a meter. scientist to I walk around a room with a meter. Richard, I, Richard, you have to have the meters stay in the same place and you've got to measure them over a year. You can't just wander around during the afternoon and think, I'm doing science. This is the <laughs> Answer. It just doesn't work that way, Richard. So how you does it work? Read, how does it work? When report, you do it day after day and it says it's the healthy, London Bob. Air Quality Network, they are the experts. They publish the data. Go and have a look for and yourself. And has it, has and it ever been better? Clear. Has it They're ever been better? Clear, Richard, Gentlemen, we have... It's above the WHO limit.